Today we're going to talk about why I hate running. No, we're going to talk about why if you're running in order to get faster, you might be doing something wrong. First of all, we want to get a couple of terms out of the way so that we can really understand what speed and conditioning are, what the difference is, and what the anaerobic speed reserve is, which is a very important concept. Fitness we use as an umbrella term for the qualities beneath it. For example, strength qualities, meaning your strength, speed qualities, meaning how fast you are, mobility qualities, agility qualities, coordinational qualities, meditational qualities. And that is followed by conditioning, which is also a quality and falls under the umbrella of fitness. And it's pretty clearly understood to be a term for endurance or aerobic capacity. Speed, on the other hand, which is also a quality, is literally a physics formula. It's distance divided by time. Literally, how quickly can you move across a distance? How quickly can you move from point A to point B? But what makes up speed, and where does the anaerobic speed reserve come into play? First, we need two more terms. Anaerobic, anaerobic. And if you're like me and slept through freshman biology class, then you probably only vaguely remember those words. The anaerobic system is a short-term system. It's explosive. It means that we can work at 100% capacity for up to about 90 seconds. And then we have a long-term system, the aerobic system, and that's our endurance system. So of course, when we think about conditioning, which we also term as endurance, we're probably using that system, the aerobic system, during conditioning. Hold on to that thought. Now in the anaerobic system, there's something called MSS, maximal sprinting speed. And this is literally the top speed that you can possibly hit, your maximum capacity at maximum velocity. And under the aerobic system, we have what's called maximal aerobic speed. And that is your velocity at your VO2 max. That's literally what the speed reserve is. It's the difference between those two systems. It's the difference between those two numbers. It's the difference between MSS, how fast you can possibly run, and MAS, how fast you aerobically run. Now this speed reserve is really important to understand because it is the reason why if we're playing a fast game, for example, then the team that has a higher maximal sprinting speed is always going to be faster in the game. When our maximal capacity is higher, when we can actually sprint faster, when our maximal sprinting speed is higher, then we're able to complete more sub-maximal volume. And that is anything that's below approximately the 95% mark. The team who has a greater ASR, as you can see in the graph, is the team that's gonna win. Why? Because they can hold that sub-maximal volume. They can hold their 80% for a longer time than the team that's having to play at 100% because that's the speed of the game. As far as the research is concerned, we have research on this in hockey, swimming, triathlon, running, field sports, of course. We know that there's some difference in ASR. For example, between genders, we think there might be a difference in maturity status, especially when it comes to peak height and then position-specific differences within sports themselves. So for example, a striker is probably gonna have a, a higher MSS or maximal speed than they are a maximal aerobic speed. So their speed reserve is probably going to look different than a midfielder who has to run the entire game. Considering the speed reserve is also super important for preventing and rehabilitating injury because it allows us to know where our maximum is and work in both sub-maximal and maximal ranges so that the body always adapts to being pushed closer to its threshold. Working too close to that threshold can be critical and risky if the body isn't used to it. Why does the ASR even matter practically? for health or for sports. It's important to know that speed kills. That is the biggest takeaway from all of the research that we have currently in the year 2021 on the ASR. So focus on developing speed. And this is done through maximal sprinting because not max sprinting is not max sprinting and not just sub-maximal volume all the time, which is what endurance is. Focus on maximal speed, working at maximum capacity, and then resting completely so the body is fully regenerated so that every single repetition that you do is a full, complete, explosive repetition. For example, training to improve your ASR can be as simple as sprinting for 10 to 15 seconds or 20 to 50 meters and then taking complete rest between repetitions and then repeating that. And as a rule, you wanna rest for every 10 meters that are sprinted, you wanna rest one minute. Remember that conditioning comes in many forms. We're not saying that we completely wanna eliminate conditioning, and we're also not saying that conditioning is bad. If you're someone who loves running, that's no problem. But for athletes who complete in sport and have team trainings, for example, you're gonna to wanna to count your sport trainings into your endurance work as well, because there's a lot of endurance and conditioning involved in that. If we also focus on, besides having two times a week, two to three hour practices, then also focusing on conditioning outside of team trainings. It can be a little bit of an overload and we actually lose speed through that. Load management is really key here, obviously, because speed is speed and that's the nervous system at play.